Hey guys, it's Julie. I figured it had been a while since I updated, so I thought I'd give you guys kind of a quick blurb of what's going on. Um, again, I apologize. There's no video yet about uh, the Shattered Medallion. Still trying to figure figure the whole, you know, being able to put links in my description and all that. I'm still not entirely sure how to do that, but um, we'll work on that. And I promise that will be up for you guys sometime soon. Uh, might work on that this weekend. Um, other than that, um, work has been pretty busy. Uh, they've been giving me a lot of hours, which is really good. Um, I usually end up working um, Sunday evening, um, which makes Sunday a very busy day because I have church in the morning, then I have my class, my ultimate journey class, and then I have, and then I get kind of like a small break sometimes, and then I get the, then I work from 4 to 8.15, so, um, and then usually they've been giving me Mondays off occasionally, which is pretty nice. And then I usually end up working the next three days, um, 1 to 9.15, which is pretty nice because those are pretty long shifts. So it makes that pretty nice. Um, and then they usually give me Friday, Saturday off, which is pretty nice because usually in retail, you know, we don't see that at all. So, that's pretty nice. I'm going to enjoy it, enjoy it while I can because the um, closer we get to the holidays and all that, you know, the more that's going to go away. Um, let's see, what else? Um, oh, let me just show you guys, guys this. Um, I have kind of a fascination with anything like medievalish and stuff like that and I um, kind of I started watching these videos online that people have made of uh, what's called the big four which is um, apparently four different characters from four different movies um, one Meredith from Brave uh, Rapunzel from Tangled a hiccup from How to Train Your Dragon, and Jack Frost from Rise of the Guardians. Now, Brave and How to Train Brave and um, and uh, oh geez, just has Brave Mo Brave and Rise of the Guardians. I haven't seen, but I did get both of those movies. I just haven't watched them yet. But I was at Toys R Us the other day and got this pretty little pretty little one for and this is really cool this is really a good deal she was originally $19.99 originally $20 well I think she was more than that actually but then she went down to $20 and then she and then she was on what they called brown clearance and so I had no idea how much she would be, but I was just like, I gotta get her. So I took her up there, and she turned out to be eight dollars, which is really pretty cool. Yeah, really pretty awesome. And so I got her, and it's the gem one where you can stick like jewels on her and you know stuff like that. So I got that. Anything medieval, I just you know I love. I mean, I have that book that is the the Time Traveler's Guide to, like, the 16th century, that kind of thing. Or 15th century. I, I can't remember which one it is. Um, so, basically, anything medieval I really like. And I have two medieval costumes in, in my closet. So, um, that's pretty cool. Um... The other thing that I wanted to talk about, um, 
as you got, as I've mentioned before, there's been, uh, been watching a lot of, um, series about, um, Slenderman, and, um, some of them I don't really watch that often, they're just a little too, I don't know, either too scary or they're too weird, I guess is the word. They're a little too odd for me, um, but the, um, one of the ones I've watched, uh, since it started has been Marble Hornet, and they just released, like, earlier this week, I think, their last, or no, last week, their last episode, and so it's interesting. It's just interesting. Um, they left it very ambiguous. They left it very much not knowing, you know, not knowing what happened. Um, the main human antagonist ended up getting taken care of. But the main protagonist, the one who we who basically was protagonist through most of the first two seasons, um, died. And so that person, you know, that person is dead. Um, and it left on a very ambiguous note. It left on the note of, um, the guy who very well may have been the source of, or the reason why the operator, as they call Slenderman, was, um, it had come after everybody. Because apparently, uh, Tim, that was his name, had been, um, had been, um, had problems as a child, and we're still not entirely sure, and that's kind of the funny thing, is there's a lot of uproar on the forums, oh, and the forum that, um, I'm a part of that's been discussing this, we've been following this and going over all the clues and all the episodes, especially the To The Arc videos and stuff, is, um, is unform dot, no, wait, hold on, hold on a second, let me make sure I get this right, forum, it's forums dot unfiction dot com and then slash hang on and then slash forums so if you go to that just you know sign in I mean you can probably even read the read the things without having to like sign in or log in or register or anything but if you're interested at all um the god marble hornets has like its whole separate section and then they have another whole section that's all about you know a lot of the other vlogs that are out there that have to do with slenderman and all that and so it's really pretty interesting and it was really good series. I really enjoyed it. I mean, and there's a, so there's a lot of fuss going on right now about, oh, well, they didn't reveal anything, and blah, 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 and it's like, I couldn't help but think of the fact that, um, the same uproar happened when Lost ended, because... I mean, it was funny because in Lost, I mean, they tried to answer, I mean, they didn't answer all of the questions, but they tried to answer some of them, and the, uh, they tried to reveal, like, where, where these characters 
were on the island for like millennia where they came from and everything. And, you know, and I thought it was funny because there's, an, there's another guy who been reacting to every single Marble Hornets episode ever since it started and I really like his reactions because he's very much I mean he's very he's logical about it and yet he you know his reactions are you know very cool so anyway so and you know this is where I agree with him at in the fact that you know laws and it was like he said you know, if you, if you explain the operator or Slenderman's intentions or, yeah, then that takes away the mystery of it. That takes away the scariness of it. And, and then you brought up Loss and he said, you know, in Loss they tried to, you know, they finally try to answer some of the questions and stuff and he said you know take for example the cave of light um which was supposedly the mystical you know thing that was causing jacob and the man black and everybody to be you know magically healed and stuff like that I thought it still doesn't explain how certain people died. <laughs> how certain people would die, but other people would just be like, Oh, I can walk, you know, I'm, I'm healed or whatever, blah, 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 blah. Anyway. So just said, use that as an example of, you know, if you try to explain something, it's going to be like, you know, Try to explain too much of it. It's just like, okay, you know. And yeah, I admit, you know, it would be nice to know, you know, a little bit more about why Hoodie, you know. Well, they revealed, um, there's a character on the show. Um, he's one who... <laughs> posted a lot of the to the art videos and you know and it was kind of weird because he's he was kind of like in some ways he was like trying to help Jay and Tim but in a lot of other ways he was like almost like really really mad at them and, it, and so it was we kind of had a theory going that Tim was a part of To The Ark at some point and maybe had even started that channel and then um, Hoodie or Brian who was one of the characters on the sh characters and who was one of the people who Alex knew and who Tim knew and pretty much everybody Brian um, was Hoodie, and we think at some point Brian either took over the channel or became more of the reason why the channel kept going. Um, so anyway, basically, so Brian was revealed to be Hoodie, and, um, you know, so they revealed some things. They just didn't reveal everything. And in my opinion, I think it's good that they didn't reveal everything. Because sometimes you just, if you reveal every single thing in your, you know, in your mystery series, I mean, that's, you know, or that ruins half the fun of it. I mean, there are still people on the forum, forum that I frequent who, you know, are still theorizing. We're still going on about, well, what do you think this meant? And what do you think this meant? Which is probably exactly what the guys who created the series want. You know, they want discussion. They want, 
you know, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that there won't be things, you know, I mean, from what I know, the guys are making, planning on making a movie about Slenderman, which could very well be set in the Marvel Hornets universe, which could mean that we could see Tim, Jay, you know, Jessica, and, you know, anybody else who's still alive. Heck, I mean, they may even bring some of the Jed characters back. And it's like, I can understand why it would be frustrating. I mean, we didn't find out what happened with a lot of the characters on the show. We didn't find out what happened with um, Seth and Sarah. We didn't find out what happened with... Um, we didn't find out if there were other, other people who worked on the show, you know. And there's a few episodes where... We just never find out what happened after an episode. What happened, you know? And, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I can understand where that would be frustrating. But at the same time, it's like, I kind of really like the mystery of it. Um, another thing that I wanted to, and I may end up posting this on the forum at some point, but in a lot of ways, it reminds me of one of the stories that used to drive me crazy as a kid, but that I also really like, The Lady and the Tiger, where basically the whole premise is this, um, it's like this kingdom or something, and rulers, totally barbarian, totally bloodthirsty, blah, 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 and he has a daughter who's half barbarian, so like her mom is like totally normal or whatever, totally normal human being, whatever, kind, decent, all that. So the daughter grows up, starts dating this guy, and I can't remember much about the guy, but anyway, so basically her father finds out throws him in jail and they had this like punishment system in the in the kingdom where you had you had you went into this arena type thing and two doors and if you open one door it was a ferocious tiger who obviously would maul you to death the man you opened the door second door you opened would be a beautiful maiden, the loveliest lady in all the land. And if that happened, the two would immediately go out and get married. And so that was his punishment. That was his, you know, he had the choice, but he didn't know which door it was. He didn't know which door held the tiger and which door held the lady. Well, the the princess finds out which door holds the tiger, which door holds the lady. So the day of this guy's judgment comes, you know, she's sitting there next to her father. And the guy comes into the arena, he just looks up at her and says, which one? Ask which one, and she turns her hand. And the really cool thing is, you don't even see which door she points to. It's just you just see her hand, and then he goes to the door that she points to. He opens it, and it ends there because there was a little movie that came along with it, as well as it being like an actual written story. And it ends with him opening the door. So you don't know. You don't know which one it is. Now that drove me crazy to begin with when I was a young 
preteen and the first time I watched that movie it was just like really really you're not gonna show show what happened but in a way that's even better because we don't know and that led to a lot of discussion as to what do you think happened you know do you think she do you think she listened to her you know do you think she would rather have him have him die than to marry somebody or as I always said accidents can happen I mean she could always you know I mean she could always let him get married right, to start with and then later on you know she could either arrange something to happen to the girl to the maiden or two of them could escape escape the country I mean you know it's always the same thing it's like Romeo and Juliet I always have a hard time with with that s story just because I mean ugh, you know it's like really it's like I remember when you're trusting somebody I don't know I was had an issue with the friar because he gave really bad advice in my opinion I realize I'm going off on the tangent here I'm not you know but anyway so that was the thing I mean it drove me crazy to begin with but now I'm just like that is a really cool way to tell a story because you don't no, you don't know what happened and you can come up with your own ending and you can you know I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they're really damn the tiger of fan fiction out there showing you know what people thought happened after he opened the door and of course you probably would imagine that it would be a lot of it would be you know, her, you know, showing here, pointing him toward the one with the lady behind it, because otherwise, you know, it would be a really short fanfic. <laughs> and then the tiger mauled him to death, and mauled him to death, and you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, so, but yeah. So, that's just my opinion. I mean, I'm sure other people would be like, We should have known. Why didn't they tell us this? And you never know. They might. They might come out with a question and answer type thing. They might come out with a, you know, I mean, they've done the interviews. Um, Troy, Joseph, and Tim have done interviews in the past where they've, you know, basically said, well, we don't want to say anything right now. We want to, you know, we don't want to wait until the show's over. So maybe now that it's over, you know, maybe the next DVD, um, so, you know, says we'll have kind of a question and answer thingy on it. You know, maybe they'll show, maybe they'll talk about it. You know, but on the other hand, I don't know. I mean, I guess I just enjoy mystery. You know, I enjoy having the mystery of it and just not knowing. I mean, it's kind of, kind of cool when you come to think about it. Anyway, so there's that. Oh. And the other cool thing is, um, I've been slowly but surely taking my books, taking videos, that kind of stuff, to the Hat Price Bookstore and getting money from them, that kind of thing. And I got two Minecraft books. I got this one, which is the Redstone Guide, and then I got this one, which is the Essential Handbook, which...
It covers a lot of really cool stuff. And the neat thing about this one is it has, um, it has, like, stories and interviews in there from people like Captain Sparkles, um, Paul, or I, I can never say his username, but, um, just a lot of the Survive and Thrive Minecraft series, that kind of thing. And they do a lot of, um, stories, and there's by, and I think that's really cool. So, anyway, I got those. Also, because Keith and I have been playing Minecraft. Matter of fact, we've got our own world now. Um, Minecraft Realms uh, started up recently, and uh, Keith went ahead and bought a world for us, and he named it Gallifrey, which I think is really cool. Doctor Who reference. And um, so we've been playing there, and really cool because he enchanted a diamond, he made me a diamond sword and he enchanted it for me. Really cool enchantments and the really cool thing is that these enchantments come totally by random. But the one enchantment is called Bane of the Arthropods, which Basically means that if you hit a, one of the giant spiders with it, they die instantly. They erupt into a flaming, flaming mass and then they die. They go poof. Which is awesome because I hate, sp I hate those giant spiders in Minecraft. Ooh. It's so much better to have the the cool, um, that cool sword, and, but like I said, it's also got the ability you whack some, a mob with it, and it sets them on fire, number one, and, uh, so, so, and it kills spiders instantly, zombies not so much, but zombies and and skeletons, they do tend to, even when they're on fire, they do tend to still move. I'm not sure how much it does with an Enderman yet, which is interesting. I'm curious to see, see what will happen if I whack an Enderman with it. Oh, and it's got the unbreaking on it, which means that it will take a lot, lot, lot longer to decay. Because usually when you use a sword or you use a pick or whatever, it decays after a while and you can't really use it. This one doesn't. And it's so pretty too. So it's really cool. It's really fun to, um, because, you know, Keith and I made our little, made our house and stuff. Actually, it's more like a castle. Um and stuff and we've been you know we've been doing different things to it we've got like sheep cows chickens we're breeding that kind of thing we've got a huge wheat field we also planted potatoes that kind of thing um and so you know it's it's like we have our own little house and stuff and i've even been uh dying some sheep and getting, shearing some wool so that I can make carpet, so that I can, uh, cause we're going to carpet the floors on both, we have like two levels plus a roof, so I'm gonna carpet both of the floors and stuff and make it look a little bit, um, make it look a little bit more homey and stuff, and it's really kind of cute. We have two beds and stuff like that, and and Keith keeps clearing out trees and stuff, so we have a nice little fighting area and all that good stuff. And I want to do some exploring, and so he gave me maybe a map, um, so that I can when I go exploring and stuff, I can you know the map can fill in and everything. So. It's a lot of fun. It's pretty cool. 
Um, what else? Oh, the house. Um, we found a lot of people come through and look at our house and everything. Just no offers as of yet. So, um, that's kind of interesting. So, we're still not 100% sure if we're supposed to leave, go down to Florida, or if we're supposed to stay here. Not really. There's not really a lot of uh, knowing there. So, still kind of up in the air kind of thing. So, which is okay. I mean, you know. What it's up to God, you know. If he, you know, if we're meant to move, it'll happen. If not, then, you know, in either way, I'm very excited because um, the plan is for Keith to come and uh, visit um, wherever we are. Come November, he wants to have Thanksgiving with us, and so that'll be fun. And it could be interesting if it's just him coming to see like the five of us if we're in Florida, and if we're here, then he'll get to meet everybody. He'll get to meet the cousins and and everybody, and so I'd be really excited about that because. I've been wanting to show them off for a while and only get to really do that with like pictures and stuff. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. So anyway, that's about it, guys. Um, it's 12 or 3 a.m. I um, should do a little bit of posting before I go to bed. And um, like I said, I'm going to do my best to try and figure out the, how to post pictures and stuff um, as part of my video. And I'll work on that review of the shed medallion for you guys. And hopefully you might get to see that sometime this weekend. I will talk to you guys later. Night.